Game development is a highly granular process, and you have to think about everything. But sometimes developers don't. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 times developers didn't care about the details. Starting off at number 10 is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Definitive Edition Riders Freakish Proportions. So going in, we knew that the definitive re-release of Grand Theft Auto 3 Trilogy wasn't going to be coming from Rockstar's A-Team, but no one really expected it to be as shoddy as it was. They have made a lot of improvements over the last year, and it's definitely in a better place than it was at release, but they are not really the definitive version of the games even now. Maybe they will be. I want them to be. They do have improvements. I'm not saying they don't, but they, they, got, a, they got a ways to go. Like, there's literally thousands of bugs and issues that could be complained about that show their apparent lack of interest in creating a polished product, but the one thing my brain keeps coming back to is Ryder's freakish proportions while riding a bike. He looks like a weird, elongated monster. Super bizarre, because uh, it's basically just because of how the Definitive Edition team chose to change his model. All the other characters look odd on a bike, but Ryder looks grotesque almost. They're not like hiding it either. You get a big close up at the end of this cutscene right here. Gia, and get yourself some colors, fool. And a haircut. It's embarrassing to be seen with you. Uh, and it's not a bug, just a byproduct of the slapdash method of making new models that don't properly align with the game's animation system. They could have made it better. I mean, it's Take-Two and Rockstar making a billion dollar product here. It's just, uh, yeah, who cares, I guess. They already knew they had our money, so uh, maybe we'll fix it later. Maybe. And number nine is Redfall, that one chimney. You know what I'm talking about here, if you've played the game. Um, but, but, and, no, let me let me change that. If you've played the game and actually bothered trying to find when it gets good, meaning you've stuck around it a long enough period of time to realize that it doesn't really. Like there's a certain level of quality that you expect from Arcane, particularly in environmental design, like all of the Dishonored games, Prey, and even um, Deathloop, they all have incredibly cool and lived in locations. So on some level, we expected to be wowed by Redfall's open world and wowed we were not. It's a pretty barren, bland, and boring world. Feels kind of like sacrilege saying that about an arcane game, but uh, look at it. It's just the truth. This place, it, it's boring. It's often ugly, and it's just not fun to explore. I almost wonder if they were forced to make this game and they made it not good to be like, yeah, we can't do a live service game, bosses. No one likes it when we do a live service game, bosses. So next time, bosses, we will not make one. And, you know, that's maybe kind of a generous theory. But what just shocks me about Redfall is you can see they cut corners like everywhere, especially on the chimneys on just about any roof. You jump up on a house, look at the chimney, and you see that instead of showing that the shaft leads into the house or even like just a black texture, it's the roof texture. The chimney might as well just be like a sculpture of a chimney chimney that you made and put on a roof. It's like basically just a chimney asset that they put on the building and that's it. Like I, I really want my theory to be true because those are the kinds of details that Arcane just doesn't skimp on. So it's weird. And number eight, it's Lord of the Rings Gollum's Schrodinger's Explosion. I think at this point, we're all aware of how bad Lord of the Rings Gollum is. It's a subject we've covered pretty extensively at this point. And like, look at it. You don't need a 40 minute video that explains in minute detail that the game is bad. Uh, you just gotta look at it. And again, it could look worse, but uh, the everything about how it moves and a lot about how it looks indicates that there's something wrong. Part of the problem is that there's just a lot of aspects of this game that developers either didn't care about or didn't slash couldn't, I don't know, prioritize. Like my example I'm gonna use is this ridiculous moment from chapter two. You're supposed to detonate these explosive barrels. This is pretty standard, right? That's not a an abnormal video game ob objective. But after setting off the last one, you're, you're just supposed to quickly escape before the barrel goes off, which 
Results in explosion that Gollum only barely manages to escape from normal video game stuff. Clearly, obviously. But what happens when you take too long or just wait it out? Obviously, the explosion still goes off, right? It just kills you because it's a video game. There's consequences when you don't complete the task, especially one where there's a ticking time bomb of some sort, right? Uh, no, wrong, not correct, somehow. Instead of seeing Gollum die in a fireball, you know, like what's shown in the cutscene when you actually escape from it, the game just stops. It, it, it just says mission failed. Run! What's that? Who's that? No! Run! Like, that's, that's it. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you get something uh, even more ridiculous when the timer runs out. Like, uh, Gollum just drops dead from nothing. Games do this kind of thing all the time, but they actually show the explosion. And uh, you'd think that's a really trivial detail, but unless the consequence, like, visually makes sense, it's not really a, a consequence. Like, we're not playing a game on MS-DOS that's like, you have died because there's no way to animate the death. There is. In fact, there are so many animation tools at this point that it is ubiquitous that it is possible. No one would question me on that. Run! And number seven, uh, NPC dialogue in Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy. The game, it didn't get a great critical reception, but fan response is a totally different story. The game ended up getting really good word of mouth, and in truth, it is pretty fun. Uh, it is not the best that we've ever seen from Team Ninja. It does take a little while to become interesting, too, but it's also a pretty darn good game if you give it a chance. It took me a while to get into it, but I enjoyed it after I did. That doesn't mean there are not moments in this game that are slapdash. Uh, there's actually many. When people praise the game, they're usually talking about the story and the gameplay. Not so much the ugly environments and the half-ass systems. That yeah, There's a lot of them. Uh, like, it's a game kind of swimming with too many ideas. One that probably could have been axed entirely was the talk menu. What is that? You might ask, what's the talk menu? Don't you just walk around towns in Final Fantasy games and walk up to dudes and ladies and say, what's up? Well, yeah, normally. Not in this one, though. You got a menu. It's a drop-down menu. That That's where you talk with the townsfolk. And I guess, you know, probably wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world if the people you talked to had some... I don't know, kind of purpose, or they told you something interesting, you know? But here's the literal first two characters. I'm using the word a little loose here. The first guy is called the Grizzled Veteran. Uh, he says, May the Crystal's blessing be with you. All right, Obi-Wan, pointless, but whatever. So let's see uh, what the next guy has to say. This is uh, a guy known as Fresh-Faced Recruit. Looks exactly the same as the previous guy and uh, also says, May the crystal's blessing be with you. There is an explanation mark, but uh, yeah, the line's the same. Like, all right, I get it. He's a little bit more enthused being fresh faced and all, but all he changed was the punctuation, guys. You had the Obi-Wan from the original trilogy, and then you got prequel Obi-Wan with a little more gusto from being young. Oh, and you accessed this through a menu. That that really shouldn't be um, ignored in any way. Uh, this is so lazy looking. Like, you get all the worst parts of talking to random nobody NPCs from old RPGs. Um, except... <sighs> Like, you don't get to go around a town, and often when you have the townsfolk, somebody has something useful to say, and why was there not a lot of useful information given out through the NPC menu? Which is not what it's called, but it's what it is. It's just, it's, it's one of the reasons why the game got bad reviews that it didn't really deserve. It's just they caked on all of this unnecessary, but somehow also lazy crap. And this is just like a prime example. And number six, Crime Boss, Rock A City. Uh, I could stop there, but I'm going to specify something specific. Uh, the Noodle Men falling over. A lot of goofy stuff in Crime Boss, Rock A City. Uh, none of it holds up to scrutiny. Not, not, not one thing. The shooting's weak. Celebrity voiceovers are embarrassing. The story is desperately trying to replicate GTA in a completely different format. So, I mean, that would require what I would expect to be a lot of skill and care, but uh, it fails miserably at it. The best thing I can say about it is that it is so goofy 
goofy and bad. It's actually kind of endearing. It's trying to be over the top, but it's weird because it makes the stealth kills really pathetic. Like, you sneak up on somebody, there's a gnarly animation where your character takes them out, which should be, you know, at least some kind of nice, meaty stabbing animation, but crime boss. Yeah, you sneak up on a guy, get the stealth kill prompt, and you just punch him in the butt, and they fall over like a statue made of jelly. They are yellows, fruity chicos. Quietly drop the thug. You know. Those deadly butt punches turn you into a noodle because you're immediately dead. All the muscles just stop. You lose all shape, the contort in rid really ridiculous ways. And it happens pretty much every time. It's not from a stab or like a haymaker punch. It's just a, like a standard close range attack that really doesn't do anything if you do it to somebody's face. But if they're facing the other direction, it's an instant kill. Yeah, it's stuff like this that make people think this game is some kind of a weird asset flip. It seems like they put a lot of work into certain parts of the game and then in others, just nearly none. Like this one. And number five is Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, the animations being hard. One of 2021's most forgettable games uh, that could have been some cheesy fun, but it's not, is uh, Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance. It's this dull, by-the-numbers, Vermintide ripoff without any of the charm or fun of those games. I guess it has a couple of unique elements going for it, but on average, not enough to care. I actually forgot this existed until it came up when we were talking about this. Uh, what is notable about the game is how bad the animations are. I get it, animation is hard, uh, but that archer right there, that's one of the most pathetic attack animations I've ever seen. Using a bow in a video game is pretty standard at this point, so plenty of reference out there to pull from, but um, this is the final product. That's it, that's what it looks like. So uh, the juxtaposition between how powerful the arrow shot looks uh, compared to how little your character moves is probably the thing that stands out the most here. I mean, the bow shot is so strong that it apparently causes the arch to throw their hands back in the air after firing, but it's not strong enough to make them do anything else. Like at all, the torso just stock still, no animation at all. And it's not hidden either. It's impossible not to see it if you're playing as this class. Most of the other animations in the game look acceptable as far as I can tell, but uh, this one really did not get the care that it should have, which is, you know, any bit of care. And number four is Saints Row, the 2022 Saints Row specifically. Uh, oof, there is a lot you could plop into this little label, but we're going to go with car crashes um, because it, not only is it bad, but it's it's so much worse when compared to the original games. In, in Saints Row 3, car crashes look pretty great. They got some meaty sound effects. They back up how violent these car crashes look. <laughs> Having your MC get thrown out the windshield is just icing on the cake, too. In the reboot, crashes feel uh, slow, like something that, um, you know, isn't that violent. And I don't know if you've ever been in a car crash, but oh, it's violent. Never mind that I'm a bird that can fly whenever I want. I've been in a car crash. Let's not get into how or why. But hey, you could drive at 100 miles per hour into a brick wall and it'd have the same level of impact as nudging a curb while parallel parking. Nearly none. I guess you could argue they wanted to make them less dramatic to make them less frustrating, but it just makes the world less dynamic. Like, not even real, because Saint Row's not really trying to be real. But there's just nothing there. And that's that's kind of the Saints Row reboot in a nutshell, too. It's boring and dull, and the old games were exciting. Car crashes were hardly the biggest problem with the game, though. Uh, they're just a good example of how overall the game just lacks the attention to detail the originals had. And number three is Sonic 06, uh, which is a buggy mess, but the scale gives you infinite jumps is specifically what we want to talk about. What does that mean? Especially in a game where, you know, it's almost hard to distinguish what's a screw up and what's intentional. What does that mean? So there's a purple gem in this game. If you get it, you get the scale ability, which shrinks Sonic's uh, 3D model and gives him the ability to infinitely jump. That is what it's supposed to do. So you're probably wondering what does shrinking have to do with being able to jump forever? Well, uh, let me tell you what, nothing at all. It's it's actually not an intended part of the game. The infinite jumping is just a thing that becomes possible uh, because the de developers never really bothered changing how Sonic calculates his jump while shrunk. So it just lets you jump infinitely. 
apparently. And that's not the end of it, because of a different bug, you never run out of energy while you're using Sonic's powers. He can say shrunk forever and jump forever, and it seems like it's because either the developers didn't care they ran out of time, or they didn't care and they ran out of time. I don't know. Sonic 06 is a mess. Most of the many, many bugs in the game made the experience so much worse. <laughs> And this one actually kind of is fun though, so it almost makes it more tolerable. So I'm glad they didn't care about the details here, because it lets you do something that is fun in a game that is otherwise so, so handicapped by its own problems that it, it is it's just not fun. That and, you know, everything about that crazy story. I'm not I'm not gonna get into that, but like, there is a mountain of didn't pay attention to detail to sift through if you want to. I don't though. And number two is the Grey Hill incident. Uh, everything about the TV kind of feels cruel ragging on a game with a single developer, but the Grey Hill incident is so baffling that it's hard not to. I I'm not sure if the game is a satire or if it's serious. And if somebody does know with certainty, or, or at least has a good theory, feel free to hit the comments with that. Tone is all over the place in this game. Uh, it is not helped by the voice acting. Uh, the voice actors are trying, but they do not know how to interpret this dialogue. And I cannot blame them. I uh, This is not me saying that they should have done a better job. Great, Ryan, you've got him. I've got some ammo. Ryan, Take are you there? Aliens, every brilliant. Try to get inside my house. Rachel, go to your room. Hide under your bed. My house is boarded up, but I'm not sure if this helps. I need help, Brian. Oh, no, the windows. Probably one of the most baffling moments in the game, though, comes early when a TV news report comes on. Uh, there's so much here that's so bizarre, especially for a game that's meant to be set in the early 90s. Like, why is the TV black and white? I, I kind of feel like an idiot saying this, but color TVs had been the standard for, like, two decades at this point. Yes, uh, black and white TVs existed in the early 90s, but um, that was not the norm. Also, why is the camera so, so close to the anchor's face? Hey, uh, like, what's, what's with this obviously modern swirling graph? graphic overlay and why does the video which is allegedly captured by a teenager have so much digital artifacting on it like if you were to guess the intent was to make it look as though it was recorded on a cell phone i don't know if you've ever used a camcorder because frankly i don't expect anybody to necessarily be that old at this point camcorder uh filmed on the VHS tapes and it looked like garbage, but for a completely different reason than this footage looks like garbage. I don't know why the news anchor signs off with this, this, the, and don't forget to be aware of the small green man in your backyard, your Mr. Broker. What, 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 what is that? What, who does that? Like, this whole thing feels like it was made by an alien with a vague understanding of what the 90s were, uh, and, and even really just a vague understanding of humanity in general. Uh, the rest of the game is not a lot better, but this news broadcast is so bizarre. And then, at number one, Aliens Colonial Marines. That's it. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the case of the missing A here. One of the most common complaints about Aliens Colonial Marines was the pathetic AI of the aliens. They were less apex predators and more headless chickens that you could mow down with ease, uh, which is kind of a problem in an Aliens game because they're supposed to be scary. Or, you know, even just like a threat. There's some people that are not afraid of threats, but they know what a threat is, so they they treat it accordingly. They are not a threat. They're like a fly in this game. They're more of an annoyance than any serious threat. And it's, it's genuinely shocking how little attention to detail uh, this one is because it's such a small, easy fix, uh, literally related to a typo of a single word in the INI file. Doing a spell check on the INI file uh, literally fixes this. So the word tether in the INI file related to the alien's AI routine is misspelled to uh, as if they changed feather to tether, T-E-A-T-H-E-R. And the word only has T-E. If you if you change that in the INI file, the alien AI gets more aggressive and does a better job of keeping track of the player. 
It's also not the only typo in the INI file that affects the alien AI. Uh, there's one where there's an uppercase A that should be lowercase, and it uh, it changes the behavior of the aliens as well. Like it's 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 rare to see bugs in a game have such an obvious and simple fix. But it goes to show you how checked out Gearbox was developing this. They just who cares? They could have literally run a spell check and fixed the big problem. I mean, you don't typically spell check an INI file, but still, just change in a couple letters. That's it. Yeah, you know, that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon the Hero, and we will see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.